All right, marking our runs for cricket on this Tuesday edition of the Sports Max Zone. Andre Russell and Sunil Narayan's Kolkata Knight Riders are into the final of the Indian Premier League after making light work of Sunrisers Hyderabad in Qualifier 1 earlier on Tuesday in Ahmedabad. The Sunrisers were dismissed for 159 in 19.3 overs, with Rahul Tripathi top scoring with 55 and South African Henry Klassen adding 32 against Mitchell Starks 3 for 34. For chasing 160 for victory, the Knight Riders reached 164 for 2 by 8 wickets with a 38 delivery to spare. And Sunil Narayan, he added 21 to the chase, which was led by Skip Ashrias Ayer with 58. And Bentakesh Ayer, no relation to Shrias, he scored 51. Well, Pat Cummings and Thangasaru Natarajan were the wicket takers. Well, a special day for cricket for Kolkata and it required a very special guest joining us in studio. Only cricket could have brought him to Kingston, Jamaica, Nikhil Utam Chandani. Nikhil, we're so happy to have you here in studio. I know I'm, I'm just waiting for when I pass the baton over to Ricardo because I know he's going to, of course, have a lot of serious <laughs> and difficult questions for you, but really happy you could join us here in studio. So let's start by, do you have anything to say to our viewers first? Yeah, I want to <laughs> say to the viewers, I always wondered about this studio. Um, I'm mesmerized. One, by the studio, breathtaking. Also by Ricardo Chambers in a suit. This man, <laughs> the suit and tie, it looks even more impressive in person. So I would implore you to get over to the Digicel building and see it for yourselves. But now, nah, great to be here. <laughs> and look, uh, it's amazing to finally come to Kingston, Jamaica. I've been scared, but I finally got over that fear and I've come through, man. Yes. How has it been? Are, no, are you, amazing, are you okay? Man. Isn't it wonderful? Just the heat, you know, it's a little it's a little hot. Y'all don't have the beaches and stuff like we do, but other than that, I think the food, oh man, proper no, cuisine. Oh, Nikhil. They, proper cuisine. Jamaica has a lot of pretty beaches. Oh. Uh, we'll have to take it's you just to Ocho. Ocho Rios, yeah. Mariah's mm. favorite place. One of why, the things, why is that? No, no, Nikhil, one of the things you'll realize with him, and I just wish you could spend some more time here, mm. Ricardo gives me favorite teams. He gives me favorite ah. places. And he tries to put me in situations where, of course, the viewers will think something's wrong with me. So but luckily, <laughs> I have a couple of them that stop him at the supermarket and they talk to him about being good to me. You know, you know they were still laughing about Ocho Rios, right? Because Mariah Ramarak <laughs> was adamant that Ocho Rios is not her favorite place to be. Mm. No, it's that just was, that I don't have that a favorite. That was on Wednesday, right? Mm. You know where she was the next day? Ocho Rios. <laughs> Jamaica is really beautiful and there are other places. <laughs> Negril is beautiful as well, but it's too far for me to drive. So, mm, you know, yeah. I just go It's to not our favorite place, but she was there the next day. Mm. I, Mariah, I also learned about Ricardo's nickname. I never knew he had a nickname, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on air. So maybe one day, <laughs> Ricardo, will tell us what it is. <laughs> if you want if you want to continue <laughs> working with us, you probably shouldn't. No, it's fine, Nikhil. I'm sure the viewers en will enjoy that aspect. And as a matter of fact, I'll be the one to tell them, so you don't have to worry about. Are we talking um, about continuing Isn't working this why with he's us? Here? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Ricardo changes the topic as usual, viewers. But we're going to continue with our IPL segment. Really happy that Nikhil could join us. So let's talk about how KKR went about mm. their business today and just the style. And for me, I'm just always happy when our West Indies players shine in these matches. We got both of them doing that today. Yeah, not only today, Maria. I think throughout this season, they've shown. And what I, when I look at this KKR team, I see no fear. And it's a different KKR team with Gautam Gambier at the helm. But I think the biggest thing about them is their bowling attack. And when you look at their bowling attack compared to the other teams, obviously, pound for pound, the batting is right up there. You think about Sunrisers. The other teams in the playoffs, Rajasthan, they all have powerful batting lineups. But when I look at the bowling lineup, I think this team separates themselves and they're really the variety that they have suited across various conditions in India and with a final in Chennai, I think no matter who they face in that final, they're favourites just because of that variety that they have in their attack. Right, and the manner in which they won today's match, I think it sent a signal to, as you said, whoever they will face in the final. They got it done in 14 overs, of course, with eight wickets to spare. So we can talk about, Nikhil, the depth of this squad, not only with ball, but of course with bat. And I think something that has to do with that result and the way, the magnitude of it was the, the toss decision. Sunrisers are a team that like to bat first. You look at five of their wins this year, five of eight wins have come batting first. They like to throw the first punch, but on a day like today in Ahmedabad where there's a lot of Jew, it can end up being 20 or 30 runs of a luxury to have. So I think 
maybe Pat Cummins, if he could go back, may have changed his mind yeah. because you saw how different things were when they bowled compared to when KKR had the ball. Yeah, and you spoke about, you know, just the importance of striking the first blow. Um, and we saw that today with Mitchell Stark with the ball. That first blow, so important, three for 22. Um, and when you can set up a match like that, it makes everything else easier, doesn't it? No, he's spot on. And I think this is why they pay him $7,000 per ball. Um, he's had a, a subpar season by his standards, but they'll forget all of that if he can produce something similar to what he did today in the final. I mean, Travis had to get that wicket early. I mean, this is now two games in a row he's been dismissed in the first three balls against the left-arm seamer. So maybe that's something for teams in the IPL to think about, in the World Cup to think about. Mm -hmm. But just the accuracy to start on the stump straight away, it was such an important wicket. And the use of conditions, once the ball is swinging, start with all of his experience, he's going to be so difficult to, to face. Yeah, and, and just talk to me about the entire bowling effort um, coming from Kolkata Knight Riders. You spoke about the different variations that they have in that lineup. Um, but it's also about in those big matches, you get the, the start, but it's so important to keep the pressure on. And we saw that throughout the course of the 20 overs. I think those two spinners that they have, Narayan Chakravati, um, best in the tournament, best spin attack in the tournament, they've got the most spin wickets. But what I love is the supporting figures. The Indian seamers has always been a problem for KKR. You look last year, not one of them got more than seven wickets. This year, two of them, Harshit Rana, Veba, Varora, both have got 27 wickets combined. Yeah. And when you have that, as well as then spinners who are contributing, pressurizing people in the middle overs with Narayan and Chakravati, it's just amazing the way that everything has just come together for them. And Russell, we can't forget him because the impact he's had with both bat and ball, and 36 years old. Yeah, 36 years old, he's having his best season. Yeah. So. Yeah, even in the field today, and I just want to add that because you you spoke about the age, right? 36 years old, and we already know in cricket there's always an asterisk by players that of course get up in age. But Andre Russell has been taking care of himself, and I remember an interview I did with him in Trinidad and Tobago when he came for the CPL, mm -hmm. and one of the things he prides himself on is the fact that you know he really works out, he takes care of his body, and I think Nikhil he's reaping the rewards of that, and nobody will have an issue with him when it's World Cup time because he does not act or feel like a 36 year old and I'm saying that in quotation of course. Now certainly he said after the England series that he wanted to be like a UFC fighter when the World Cup came around and he <laughs> says I actually said it yesterday that he watches the UFC to get inspiration this man you look at his Instagram stories in the gym at 4 a.m. 5 a.m. but look I think he knows how important fitness is but also the fact that he is getting older but what he's doing for this KKR team, he obviously will have a much bigger role for the West Indies, but if they can get even a half of this production out of him, I think with his bowling especially, if he can bowl two at the back end of the innings every game because he's doing it effectively for KKR when they need him, I think it'll fill a huge deficiency that the West Indies currently hold going into that T20 World Cup. Yeah, and I just want a quick word on Sunrisers because they did have a really good run. It's just unfortunate how they have to leave the tournament. Well, of course, they have the other chance because yeah, yeah. they've obviously finished in the top two. But I think the only problem with them is the spin. And you go to Chennai now to face maybe a Rajasthan Royals um, or RCB who are in red Which hot form. Which is rough as well, yeah. It's just I'm thinking about Chennai, and that's why I think KKR are so well suited. Because Chennai, you just never know what you get. If you get a red soil surface, it can really spin. All of a sudden, we saw 210. It could be 150 as a winning score. So... It's just really interesting with their spin attack. But look, Natarajan was very good today. Pat Cummins has been good. And that batting lineup, if they bat first and post 250, they pretty much can bat you out of the game. Yeah. yeah. Royal Challengers and uh, Rajasthan Royals <laughs> coming up tomorrow. Um, talk me through that one um, because that is eliminator number one. Yeah, huge game to be honest. I never thought I would be sitting here talking to you that Rajasthan, I'm sorry, the Royal Challengers Bangalore would be in this playoffs after losing six straight. But I just tell you, it's, it's the importance, I think, of confidence and T20 cricket, where things can just happen for you like this. Um, again, I think probably a little light on the spin side of things, but that batting lineup, they've found something. Patidar at three, um, Dinesh Karthik has been sensational throughout the season, and then obviously Virat and Faf. And even Virat, he's sort of changed the way he's gone about things in the way he bats against spin, highest ever strike rate for, the, for him in the IPL, in the middle overs as well, even in the power play. So I think they obviously are a team in red hot form. On the other side of the spectrum, Rajasthan, who have lost Joss Butler and seem to be going in the wrong direction. They never really should have slipped out of that top two, but now to lose four in a row, they're kind of in some trouble. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really interesting. I hope Hetty can be back yeah. on the park. And it's interesting how, how their seasons have 
gone, isn't it? Because Rajasthan's decline almost coincided mm. with the rise of RCB. Yeah. Um, and now they collide at a stage of the tournament where you have no second chances. It's do or die, come tomorrow, win or go home. Yeah, I think that's probably why a team like RCB will feel comfortable tomorrow because they'll be like, we have nothing to lose because probably no one had us to be here anyway. Yeah. Uh, whereas the Rajasthan Royals, who the sort of narrative around them has always been, they start well and are never able to finish. And we thought with Captain Sanju Samson and his turn on form, this year would be different. But again, it's never easy when you lose someone like a Joss Butler, scored back to back hundreds in early in the season. And even though he's had a quiet year, you, you always know he can produce on that big day. Yeah. For him not to be there, it's a huge loss. Yeah. yeah, and of course, get it. what did you want to say, Ricardo? Go ahead. No, 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 no. <laughs> I wanted to say that we've already had to relegate one so-called prediction guru. Mm. Um, and since we have Nikhil <laughs> in studio, <laughs> and I dubbed him the cricket prediction guru last year after he got everything in the CPL he spot was good, on. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a real prediction guru. Um, I just wanted to know how the rest of the IPL is going to go from the eliminator to qualifier two to the championship match on Sunday. Mm, I think I'll have, I'll, I'll go with SRH uh, KKR rematch in the final. Ooh. Um, but tomorrow I have RCB to win that game and then surprise, surprise, Sunrisers to beat RCB in that qualifier to get to the final. To be honest, I put no thought into that. So No, but I was going to actually, so what our um, self proclaimed Football prediction guru says, I was actually going to use I, the line to save you. He usually says when we put him on mm. the spot that, listen, and I'm trying to do his accent as well. He says, listen, I don't just come on here and make predictions. Mm. I have to watch back the footage, Mariah. I have to look back at everything. And then I can come here with an informed prediction. Mm. I was going to try to help you with that, Nikhil, but then you went ahead and answered. I should have waited. But listen, <laughs> T20 cricket is very unpredictable. The USA beat Bangladesh today in a T20 international game. So anything can happen in this sport, man, which is why I love it. Yeah. No, the way Mariah just threw Lijay under the bus is... Well, with friends like you, who needs enemies? No, that's what he says. The viewers, <laughs> what I always say, viewers, you are looking at the show every day. You memorize it just as good as me. So <laughs> I didn't make anything up. Liz says that, and they know that. <laughs> when Lance is here, do you all fight? Like, does, does he sort of be the one to break up the fights, or no, does he, he join adds in? It. Actually, no. Lance is like the parent who mm. turns a blind eye. No, okay. sometimes I feel like he adds fuel to the fire, and then he acts innocent. <laughs> Mariah is throwing everybody under the bus. Mariah is Lance telling the is truth. Not here to defend himself. I'm telling the truth, and when he comes back, he'll speak for himself. On that note, did all producers say go to break? Yeah. Yeah, we gotta go to break. Break time. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you for having me. <laughs>